cloudy, overcast day today. But I need to get this fall renovation video done, so you're just gonna have to bear with the sad, cloudy, overcast weather today for this video. How's it going, A? Welcome back to the Great Green North. Today we're gonna be talking about fall renovations. Today is the day, the big day. I'm releasing this full detailed video about how to do a fall renovation. Now this isn't the only video I will be releasing about how to do a fall renovation. I'll be releasing video by video, step by step, completing each step of this fall renovation that I'm going to outline for you today. Now I've already released the first step of this video. I released it last week if you haven't seen that. Link an iCard up in the right corner here. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Timestamps will be in the description for those of you who want to skip through the video to get to the important stuff. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first important question that I get a lot is what is a fall renovation? So you guys can know if you need to do a fall renovation without knowing what one is. So fall renovation, all it is, is it's overseeding or seeding complete bare spots in your lawn to strengthen your lawn with new cultivars of grass seed for the upcoming year. The best time to strengthen your lawn, cool season lawns, is in the fall. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to overseed and furt, heavy furt, to strengthen that lawn in the fall so you'll have a greener, stronger, better lawn come next spring. These fall renovations can make major differences in your, in your yard. The first time that I did one on mine, it completely changed the way my yard looked the next spring. So doing a fall renovation, for those of you who have been watching the channel all year, following along, doing a fall renovation will take you to that next level of having the greenest lawn on the block. So now a lot of you are probably asking, how do I tell if I need to do a fall renovation? Well, it's pretty simple. Is your lawn less than 30% grass? So if your lawn is less than 30% grass, then you need to start over. You're gonna need to either sod, make a decision. Are you gonna sod your lawn, resod, or do another seeding project? Now, if you're looking for a fall renovation seating project instructions, check out Ryan Norris video that he uploaded the other day. It goes all over every step about how to seed a new lawn in the fall with a fall renovation. But the renovation type that I'm gonna be talking today is overseeding. So overseeding your lawn to add new cultivars in that lawn to strengthen it for the next season. So if your lawn is 30% grass or more, you can go ahead, follow this plan, and it will strengthen your lawn to be green and healthy for the next year. Even if you have invading weeds and you don't have the access to kill them, even if you follow this plan, it'll strengthen your lawn because your lawn is the ultimate weed killer and will push out the weeds. So if you follow this plan, it will strengthen your lawn and push out the weeds without having to use any chemicals. So for the simple answer to that question, is your lawn 30% grass? Then you can do a fall renovation over seed, just like I'm doing. If your lawn is less than 30% grass, then you're going to have to start over either with a complete new seeding project or sod. So step number one for your fall renovation project, if you have a lawn with large invading weeds and you wanna reduce the weeds that you're gonna to have to deal with next year as strengthening your lawn at the same time, you can go ahead and use a weed killer, something with 2,4-D or Queen Clorac to kill out crabgrass, dandelions, clover. I killed out a whole bunch of knotweed a few weeks ago. I released a video about that linked in the description up here. You want to make sure that you're following the, the labels on the bottle of the weed killer. A lot of weed killers you have to spray 14 days before you're allowed to put down seed and you guys are already very very narrow in that window. See the best time to seed up here in Canada is you have to seed at least six weeks before your first frost which means you have to seed sometime in August or September. Most of the time, first week of September is your cutoff for seeding. So for those of you who are looking to spray weeds, you're probably pretty close to being outside your window, but that's okay. You don't have to spray weeds for this to work. You just need to strengthen the lawn because the lawn is the ultimate weed killer. Now, for those of you who watched that video the other day about me spraying weeds, I did spray a lot of the invading knotweed in the lawn and it did work. As you can see here, most of the knotweed is all die off or dead in the lawn here it's just taking a couple of days for it to completely die back but it's pretty much there by now all the knotweed has been taken out of the lawn by that one application of weed killer that it did now some of it obviously is still here like this one but majority of it's been taken out so next year as long as i follow the same pattern about getting on top of it earlier than i did this year in june when the knotweed first starts to come out I should be able to stay on top of the knotweed all year. Okay guys, so step two. So now that you've decided if you're gonna spray your weeds or not, you're gonna need to go and find an aerator. So most rental shops will rent you an aerator for about 50 to 60 bucks 
for four hours or about 70 to 80 bucks for a day. Now you can also do it where you can split the aerator with other people that you know. If you have other people around you that are looking to use an aerator, you probably need somebody to help you lift it in and out of the truck if you're taking a truck with you. Now, why do you need the aerator? Well, you need a core aerator, not a spike aerator. A core aerator pulls mechanical cores out of the ground to help loosen the soil, loosen the compaction in the soil, allow more air to get down to the roots of the lawn. And as well as this, it helps smooth out major bumps that you have in your lawn. And the final thing it helps do is for us with our overseed, it helps our seed work our way down into those cores all over the lawn and really make sure that we are getting proper seed to soil contact. So it helps strengthen the lawn just in general without seed, but with seed, it really helps strengthen the lawn because it allows that seed to work down, gets proper seed to soil contact and helps loosen the compaction in the lawn, really making those roots go crazy, driving those roots really deep. It helps with drought resistance, weed resistance and disease resistance. So that's what we want. We want those roots to drive super deep by allowing that oxygen to get into the lawn. So you need a core aerator. You're gonna get that core aerator. You're gonna aerate your lawn twice. So I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that. So go over this more in depth in my aerator video, but basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna go lengthwise all the way along then you're going to go widthwise all the way along and if your lawn is really really bad then you're going to go lengthwise again so two to three times you've rented the aerator you want to get your money's worth so go ahead and just aerate it a whole bunch of times you want to poke tons of cores to really allow holes for that seed to get down into the ground to germinate. So now we've reached to the part that everybody loves. Everybody loves to put down new grass seed. It's one of the things that I've noticed working in lawn care for quite a bit. People love just to throw down new grass seed. I'm gonna encourage you guys to go and find an elite grass seed. So you wanna find a seed that has zero weed seed, weed seeds, and a lot of elite grass seeds have been properly tested for sod use. And they will be a lot stronger, come up a lot quicker, and hold a lot better in the coming year. So you wanna make sure that you're looking at elite better grass seeds. I will have a link down in the description below for some good grass seeds that you can pick up locally here in Ontario. And as well as that, you're gonna get that seed, you're gonna overseed your lawn. So basically why you're overseeding your lawn is because some of our lawns are what we call old school lawns. So my lawn was planted when this house was built. This house was built in the 90s. So this lawn is almost 20 years old. The, the cultivars of grass in this lawn, some of the original cultivars are 20 years old. And cultivars of grass, older things, right? As we know with humans, older things, they start to grow slower, they don't start to work as well. So you wanna mix in new, stronger cultivars in your grass that are more disease resistant, more drought resistant, and will just help overall give your lawn, give your lawn a green and darker look. So that's why we're mixing in new cultivars of grass. So you're gonna get that grass seed, you're gonna put it in your hopper, your spreader, you're gonna throw that seed down at five pounds per thousand. So if you don't know how to do that, check the video that I have up here about how to fertilize your lawn. You're gonna put that seed down at five pounds per thousand all over your lawn, and that's gonna help as a nice overseed for your lawn. It will fill in all those cores, and it will just really help strengthen and make your lawn thick and healthy for the next upcoming year. Now, for those of you that have bare spots in your lawn, like I have up here, this spot just really got invaded with weeds, gets hit directly by the sun. As we can see, you guys are gonna take a rake. So after you've overseeded with grass, you're gonna take a thatch rake. You're gonna rip up all this old grass thatch. You're gonna rip all this up. As you can see, you wanna get right down to the soil. And then once you're down to the soil right here, you can go ahead and take your seed by the handful throw it down so you're going to throw it down to really fill in these thin spots we want to get these thin spots filling in as best as possible so that's why we're going to take our seed and throw it down by hand to fill in these thin spots in our lawn so if you have any bare spots make sure that you're seeding them back in by hand the overseeding will help fill them in eventually but throwing down some extra seed never hurts folks the seed is cheap throw her down if you want results from this you gotta go heavy with the seed. If you really want to, you can go seven pounds per thousand with your grass seed. Seed is cheap, throw her down, that's how you get results. Sometimes only 70, 50, 60% of grass seed germinates. Not all 100% of seed that you put down will germinate. 
just the way it works. So throw down heavy grass seed, expecting for sometimes only 30% of that grass seed to germinate. So now guys, you've really completed the two most important steps. You've aerated, you've mechanically aerated, you've poked holes, opened up that lawn, and you've put down the seed. That seed is gonna help fill in your lawn. Now, if you don't have the money to keep going from here, you can stop and go ahead and water, water, water. But I would encourage you guys to follow this extra step to really help take your lawn to the next level and to help your seed come up. If I would encourage you guys, if you can, please do follow this step because it will definitely make your results a heck of a lot better. So the fourth step is fertilizing. Now, if you've been following my fertilizer program, you guys haven't fertilized since late July and a lot of our lawns are starting to lose their color a little bit because we haven't fertilized in a really long time. But I just don't like to push growth during dry, stress seasons of the lawn. But now that we're coming out of that season, it's time you can push growth on your lawn. So you're gonna get the fertilizer that I recommend down here or a Scott's product. You wanna make sure that you're getting one pound in of nitrogen. This is really gonna help make that seed pop as fast as possible. And it's really gonna help the rest of your lawn pop and harp to spread back in, get it to green back up again and start to grow and spread. For those of you who haven't watered, your lawns are probably brown and dead. It's really gonna help it green back up and start to spread in. You also wanna look for something with potash. It will help your lawn repair those dead, thinned out areas that you may have struggled with disease, drought, other things like that. And if you can, look for something with phosphorus. It is banned in many parts of Ontario here, but if you can get something with phosphorus, that really helps strengthening the roots of your new grass seed. So the best mix that you could get would be just an all-purpose fertilizer mix, a 10-10-10 or a 16-16-16, and just go ahead and throw that down at one pound per thousand of nitrogen. That's how you're gonna get some of the best results from the seed. You wanna make sure you're throwing down heavy furt to get the best results for this seed to make sure that it has the best conditions to grow for the year. Now, all the steps that I've listed so far, you're gonna do on the same day. You're gonna aerate and then you're gonna overseed and fertilize all on the same day. Now you're getting into the deep, more hard part. A lot of seed projects fail because of lack of water. This is the most important part of putting down grass seed. You need to water, water, water. Water, water, water. You always need to keep that seed wet for as long as possible. Anytime you walk on the lawn for the next two weeks after you put down the seed, you want it to be wet on your feet. Sometimes that means watering 30 minutes, just one time a day. We get a lot of dew here in the spring or in this fall normally. So sometimes it means just watering one time a day for 20 to 30 minutes. Sometimes it means watering two to three times a day for 20 to 30 minutes. Water, water, water. For those of you with larger lawns like me, I know it's very difficult to water two to three times a day for 20 to 30 minutes. So I would encourage you guys to make sure that you just water the whole thing every day for 14 days, 20 to 30 minutes in each zone. Water, water. Water. Seed projects fail without water. You really want to keep your lawn damp all the time. Make sure that seed is wet. And for those of you who are filling in bare spots, that's another really important spot. So you can let your lawn dry out a little bit, but those bare spots, you don't want them ever to be dry. You want to keep them wet all the time. Just go out there with a hand hose or a watering can and soak them. Now you don't want the lawn too wet. You don't want the lawn so wet that the seed is drowning in water, but and you have puddles. If you have puddles, stop you want to make sure lower your watering to about 30 minutes and just keep the lawn wet all the time so just keep going out there watering the lawn keeping it wet for 14 days straight after you see once you've passed that 14 day window you can go to watering every other day so when you're watering every other day you can up your watering a little bit so maybe watering for about 40 minutes every other day to really help make sure that seed is staying wet as it's starting to grow because it should have already germinated by now. Once you've reached that every other day for a week, then you can put it back to your regular watering cycle. Make sure you're watering one half inch every three to four days and also alternating with rain. Water, water, water. Don't skimp out on the watering. You spent almost two to $300, depending on how big your lawn is, with all this work, with the fertilizer, with the grass seed, with the aerator, don't skimp out on the watering. This is where things fail. Watering is the most important. I know it's the hardest, but it's the most important. So make sure that you're on top of it, you're watering constantly, that's how you're gonna get results. Step six, pretty simple, keep off the lawn. Try to keep off of it. I mean, obviously, we're gonna have to walk on the lawn to move our sprinklers, but just try not to have any parties or anything where everybody's just running all over the lawn. I know with this year and the pandemic and everything, 
parties aren't really happening but just try to not run over on the lawn playing sports over the lawn driving cars in the lawn especially those spots those bare spots that you're really filling in the seed try to keep off the lawn as much as possible it will really help your seed come in the best it can so just try to keep off the lawn in general. Don't be running all over it, driving all over it, everything like that. Now in keeping off the lawn, the question comes in about mowing. So mowing is always a big thing. It's a little bit controversial when it comes to fall renovations. If you are seeding bare spots, wait until that grass seed has grown at least an inch higher than what you plan to mow it at. So if you're seeding bare spots, wait until the grass seed has grown. If you're cutting at two inches, wait until the grass seed's grown three inches. If you're following my plan, you're cutting at four inches, wait until that grass seed's grown five inches. Then you can go ahead and cut it. And even when you cut it, you wanna get on, get off. Don't dilly-dally, don't be cutting crazy stripes, don't be driving weird circles around it. Just get on and get off the lawn. Now for an overseeding project like this, obviously with the amount of nitrogen that we're putting on the lawn, it's gonna be growing like crazy. So I'm just gonna say, you gotta mow, so go. This happens a lot of times. In all the landscaping projects that I worked, we would do fall renovations overseeding for most of our customers, and we would keep them on the regular mowing cycle right after that. We wouldn't even skip a beat, and we, they would all get results. So mowing is not really gonna drastically hurt or change anything. All that it's gonna do is it's just gonna help keep things a little bit more tidy. You don't wanna let your lawn get super overgrown and then you're mowing it and you're cutting stuff off and you're leaving clippings everywhere. That's just a disaster. So just go ahead and mow. Maybe just back off from mowing twice a week. Try to mow once a week for at least the first 14 days. Obviously with all the water and nitrogen, things are gonna be going like crazy, so you gotta mow. So when you gotta mow, just go, but be light. Get on, get off. Maybe take your striper off, your mower, and we might help that a bit a little bit more. Don't be doing crazy turns, just kinda get on, cut it off, and get off. Finally guys, be patient. This is a very long, arduous process. The ryegrass will come up in three to four days. A lot of the Kentucky Blue might come up in seven to 10 days. Some of it doesn't come up till 13, maybe 14 days. So don't expect to see results right away. It's gonna be at least a week or two before you're even seeing grass seed coming up. Don't give up. I know a lot of people who give up when they don't see grass seed in two to three days, they just stop watering and now they've put all of that work, all of that seed to waste. Don't give up, keep watering for 14 days, then put it on your two watering every other day a week schedule and that grass will eventually germinate. It will germinate, don't give up. It's a long process. You just gotta be patient and hold it out and the results will show next spring and next summer when your lawn is stronger because you've completed a fall renovation. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you guys liked it. Make sure to subscribe because starting this weekend I'm doing my fall renovation. So I'm going to be running everything that I can here. For those of you who live in southern Ontario, you want to be doing your fall renovation sometime in the next three weeks. We have a three week window where it's the best time to seed. Temps are cool enough. We get lots of dew in the morning. We get lots of thunderstorms in the afternoon. And as well, you need to make sure that you're seeding six weeks before your first frost for us here in Southern Ontario. It's about middle of October, which means that our cutoff for seeding is first week of September. So for those of you in Southern Ontario, you wanna make sure that you're seeding first of, Ontario, uh, first of September. For those of you in Northern Ontario, maybe last week of August. So we're getting very close to that window. I'm gonna be doing my fall renovation next weekend, so make sure you subscribe to get all that and more on here on the Great Green North. From the Great Green North, my name's Wade Keep it green.